when you get in the book of Acts, there's some things that it started off, and, and, and it, it, it started off with a great promise, the promise that the Holy Ghost is going to be given. But it also started off with a little bit of a, well, let's just turn to Acts 1. And I promise I will be very brief, but I want you to see that we don't have anything to be down about. We have things to be up about if we want to be a book of Acts church. You, you know, and, and uh, you, you know, it started off with they had lost the Savior to them physically. You know, he had been put in the ground, was in the ground three days, and he came back for a little while. And now it was hard to be joyous, I think, when you see him taken up again. But he promised them before he left that they would, that if they go to Jerusalem and tarry, they would be endowed or endued with power from on high. But they had to stand there and watch this one that they love be called up. And Pastor, I, I don't think that would have been very joyous to watch him leaving out. But he said he was going to send another comforter, and another meant another just like him. And, and, and so Acts 1 was that. Acts 2 was when his promise, how many know Jesus' his promises were true? You know, where'd that come from? Because his father's promises were true. And everything that I've read to you today is true. And God kept his, he's a covenant-keeping, promise-keeping God. So in the book of Acts 2, the Holy Ghost was poured out without measure. You know, they, 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 they come in there and, and it didn't baptize. I'd like to see that, Pastor. I'd, now, and you maybe saw some of that stuff. I haven't. I've saw a few people get baptized in the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost set up on every one of them in that house. And, and cloven tongues like as of fire broke out in that place. And it was, it was a glory hallelujah meeting that they had there. So you think everybody's going to be happy. Well, not exactly. And, and that, that's, our, that's our problem. We think everybody ought to be happy. Everybody ought to be pleased with you. And, and there should never be no, if somebody just says, you know what, Richard, he thinks he's all that in a bag of chips. He, he, he don't, but, but like I say, he's sitting on the front row. That's enough to wreck some people's boat. They had a little more than just harsh words to say in the book of Acts. So, so as miracles were taking place, and it would be glorious to have been there in, in Acts 2. Would to God that I could have been there and sat in and, and saw that happen but, but I wasn't. But anyways, there was 3,000 saved, and glorious things began to happen. So you think everything's going to be good. Well, that's in Acts 1. Acts 2 was good stuff. But let, let's see how long it took for a little problem to come. Acts 3, you know, there was a lame man healed at the gate, beautiful. And Peter preaches another anointed sermon. And he, you know, another group, a big group gets saved. So everything is happy, 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 happy. Well, let's go to Acts 4. <clears throat> Acts 4. And we'll pick up in verse 4 of Acts 4. <clears throat> or, I mean, verse 18 of Acts 4. And they called them. It didn't take long for, for things to start happening. You know, the people were being filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and, and by the way, they got filled in Acts 2. And, 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 they, and they got filled again right here in, in Acts 4. It said, And Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. said unto them, You rulers, this is in verse 8, rulers of the people and elders of Israel. And, and they were examining them because of the miracle that was done. But anyways, when you get down to verse 18, And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. Kathy, I want you to put up one scripture right now. 1 Timothy 2. And one. First Timothy two and one. I exhort you, first of all, supplication, prayer, and intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men. Verse two. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Now, now and we know we're, we're because it says that right there. But I want, I want to see here where Peter is praying for those that are in rule. You, you understand what I'm saying? The ruins that are in rule is telling them they can't preach no more in the name of Jesus. He said, we, we can't help. we got to preach and do what we said. And I'm telling you, the rule that is in America right now, we're going to have to pray against what's going on. If it's ungodly, we're not for that. Ahab was a king. 
But when the prophet came over, he didn't pray for the king. He spoke against what the king was doing. I'm not trying to start a rebellion, but I'm telling you, you when you start looking at this word right here, you're going to find that they had opposition and they still kept on doing what they were supposed to do regardless of what the opposition was. We want a book of Acts church, but we don't want the conflict that may go with it. They're saying, they're saying, and I believe we will, I believe that some of us will be arrested. I believe that some of us will get put in prison. I'm, I'm not speaking that, but I'm just saying, but so what? It ain't going to be anything. There it is again. <clears throat> I guess I just can't help it, can I? Uh, it won't be anything new. So it only took to Acts chapter 4 for them and, and to begin to run into com some conflict. But Peter and John answered and said in them, verse 19, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken to you more than unto God, judge ye, for we cannot but speak the things which we have heard and seen. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing that they might punish them because of the people, for the men glorified God for that which was done. Well, anyways... Verse 24, he said, well, verse 23, And being let go, they went into their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders, and that was one had rule, you know, said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that's in them. And by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen raise and the people imagine vain things? And the kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ, for of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, those folks that were in rule, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and counsel determined. And now, Lord, behold our threatenings, and grant us thy servants with all boldness that we may speak thy word. They wouldn't back him down. Well, hallelujah. And it said, <clears throat> By stretching forth thy hand to heal, and signs and wonders may be done in the name of thy holy child. And they, when they had prayed, the place were shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, they were getting this Holy Ghost stuff right. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Okay, so that, that's Acts chapter 4. Let's, let's go over to Acts. We, we want a book of Acts church, right? I, I want to see the signs and wonders that they was the man that was laying at the gate called beautiful. So Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But he didn't end right there. He said, but such as I have. Glory to God, he had something in him. And we need to understand we got something in us. Such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he rose up and walked. But there wasn't blessings that came with it. But when you get on with Acts chapter 5. You know, some more things had taken place. You know, Peter had been going down the street and his shadow was healing people. And you think, well, the whole town rejoicing because everybody was sick. They come out there just his shadow going by, healed them. So surely there'd be joy in the camp, right? No wrong. There wasn't joy in the camp. Look at verse 17. It said, and when the high priest rose up and all that were with him and the sect of Sadducee were filled with indignation, they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. What was they doing? They were putting them in prison for doing what? Doing the work of the Lord. Book of Acts, church. But, you know, I told you last week, when that but goes in a verse like that, that means that it still ties on to the verse. That they put them in jail, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the door of the prison and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people the words of life. And when they heard that they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught, and, but the high priest came, and they were with them and called a council together and all the senate and the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officer came, they found them not in prison and returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut. We shut with all safety and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we opened, they found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard that these things, they doubted of them which unto this would grow. And they then came one and told him, Behold, the men that you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. And they sent the captains and the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people. 
lest they should be stoned. And when they brought them and set them in front of the council, and the high priest asked, saying, Did we not straightly command you that you are not to teach in this name? Behold, you have filled all Jerusalem with your doctrine. Praise God. I wish they'd say that about us. You have filled all of Loudoun County with the doctrine of the Bible. And we believe the whole Bible and nothing but the Bible, and we're not going to back down. Praise the Lord. I wish that was told about us. Said, You intended to bring this man blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. How many agree we ought to obey God rather than man? Well, let, let, I'm, I'm going to try to hurry along right here in Acts chapter 6. You know, the great things that's happening. You, you know, and, and, and here in Acts chapter 6, you're going to come a little complaining about the widows not being taken care of, so they appointed. You know, seven men to, to look after this, and one of his name was Stephen. He's a man, verse 8 said he was a man of full of, of faith and power and did wonders and miracles among the people, just a deacon. You know, he was a deacon, and miracles were working through him because he believed the word. It's not about who you are, it's about whose you are. Well, so what did they do for, for Stephen? Well, they celebrated him that he was taking care of the widows and orphans, right? No, they didn't celebrate him that he was doing that. They decided that it would be better if they would take him. Let, let's pick up in verse 12. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and called him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses, not just witnesses, false witnesses, and said, This man ceases not to blaspheme the words against this holy place. But some way or another, Stephen was still able to speak the word of God, preach them a message, and went all the way back to bondage up to that time and told how Jesus had had paid the price. I mean, he preached them a glorious message and then they celebrated him with a stoning party. The book of Acts. But I want to tell you something. He didn't die in vain. The Son of God gave him a standing ovation and was waiting on him. But the book of Acts church had some persecution. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Glory to God. Well, did, did it slow him down? No. It just stirred him up a little bit more. Go to Acts 7. You, you know, that, that's, that's I'll, I'll let you just pick up in the last two verses, Acts 7, right there, and you'll see for yourself. Verse 59, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. I don't know how the Lord did that. They're, they're throwing stones, and stones are pounding him, and... Life is going out of him, and he's crying, Lord, where did he get that from? That's what Jesus prayed. He had Jesus, the deacon had Jesus down inside of him. So there was some persecution in the church. Did the church back up because Stephen was stoned to death? No. You, you, you go on down in, in chapter 8, you'll find where Philip, another one of the deacons, went down right there, and he had a great revival, and he, and he came and he preached you know, to the eunuch and, and, and carried out the work. Go to Acts chapter 9. In Acts chapter 9, you'll find where Saul, Saul, verse 1, And Saul, yet breathing out threatening and slaughter against the disciple of the Lord, went to the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, if they found any of them in his way, whether it be men or women, that they might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there, you know, God got tired of Saul shaking his fists, in the face of God, now, now Saul was religious, thought he was doing a good thing, but he had an encounter with the living Jesus, knocked him off his horse, and changed his life. He wound up, he, he, he had eyesight going in. He didn't have no eyesight coming out, but he had some eyesight that God gave him on a spiritual level. When Ananias come down and laid hands on him, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost, so you think now things are going to get a lot better, because one, one of the opposition, now everybody will see that they won Saul, one of the greatest leaders they had against the church they got him on their side so everything will get better now right well let's see if it does or not so, so Saul got filled with the Holy Ghost and, and if you'll come on over to uh, chapter 20 I mean verse 20 of chapter 9 this is after he got filled with the Holy Ghost it's, he didn't go to cemetery I mean seminary he didn't have to learn how to be dead Straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue, that he was the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed that is this not he that destroyed them that was called in Jerusalem 
and came hither for that intent that they might bring them bound to the chief priest. But Paul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt in Damascus, proving that this is the very Christ. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to what? Kill him. Do we really want a book of Acts, church? Persecution calls those people to be driven. And, and it just goes on. You know, Paul and Silas was, you know, did healing miracles and they got put in the jail. And at the midnight hour, they wasn't singing, you know, oh, how sad I am. They was singing praises unto the living God. You know, and, and you're going over a couple more chapters and, you know, Herod had James killed, took Peter and put Peter in prison, but the church prayed. And as the church prayed, you know, the, the miracles happen in the midst of trials, church. Right. Amen. That ain't necessarily good news. There's ain't again. But the good news is, is when sin abounds, grace did much more about it. Every little power trip that they would raise up, God would raise up something even greater on their behalf. So if you want to see some the best days is ahead. They may not celebrate you and run a big clip on you on TV, tell them, as a matter of fact, I don't think they ever did that for Paul. I, I, I didn't see where anybody celebrated him but the Lord. And Paul went through all that. And oh yeah, that Paul got to have a little rock party of his own, Cleo. There, there was a time when Paul was out there and they had a rock party in his and they left him for dead. Y'all don't know. You look at me like, he's making that up. No, he's not making that up. Uh, you know, they wanted to kill him in, in, in Acts chapter 9. But I'm trying to quit here, but I, I, I just feel like I, I've got to show you that, uh, you, you know, it was in Acts chapter 12 where Peter was arrested. And Herod had killed James. And, and then in Acts chapter 14, I'll quit here on Acts chapter 14. Everybody turn to Acts chapter 14. I want a book of Acts church. I, I want to see the signs and the wonders and miracles. Because they said something about that little group. And there's something else you think, well, we're so small. We're just a little handful. Gideon was a little nobody. And God come to Gideon when he was hiding out hiding out and said thou man of valor and, and so Gideon God talked to him again and he gets him an army of 32,000 he's going against a the number they can't number and, and, and God takes him out there and he said I want you to bring them down here he said you got too many and, and Gideon said say what he said I'll bring them out here and, and, and he, you know, well first he told him to tell him anybody that was afraid go back home that took care of most of them. Then he still told him he had too many yet. And he told him to come down by the, the water. And, he, and he, so he, he went from 32,000 the time it was over. He had 300. And with 300 men, and by the way, it doesn't say where Gideon was praying for his opposition. You, you know, he, with 300 men, got the victory. He said, well, that's, you know, that's good. I got one better. Jesus only had... 12. And with that 12, he said, those that have turned the world upside down have come here also. We got 12 right here, just, 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 just right here. Then, then there's about another 12 right here. Then there's about another, two, you understand what I'm saying? We, 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 we got enough. As a matter of fact, if the Lord's on your side, you got enough. He's enough all by himself. Where did I ask you to go? Acts 14, was that where we went? Okay, so it, it, it says there, I'll just pick up in verse 6. It, it, you know, they fled. And, and, and then verse 7, they preached the gospel. And, and then, you know, there was a, a man that was healed, so they, was, they wouldn't put him in prison for stealing or robbing or murdering. They, they were putting him in prison for people being healed. 
and, and in verse 19, so there came together certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium and persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as disciples stood round about, they rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas. He departed and went, and when they had preached the gospel in that city, they stoned Paul for doing the works of the Lord. It's time for the church to stand up. It's time for us to straighten up our backbone. It's time for us to believe the Word of God is all we need. We got the Word, the name, the blood, and the same God that took care of those fellows. If He can't take care of us, then maybe it is time for us to do like the Iraqis did. Turn tail and run. How many believe it's time for us to do that? They better not be a hand go up. I believe it's time for us to say, Lord, you're more than enough. Yes. And I'm enlisted in this army that wins. We win, we win, we win. And, and, and as for me and my house, how I many can say that? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. And for us to have a book of Acts church, we're probably going to have some of the book of Acts trials. Oh, me. Pastor, tell me about how the blessings are coming. Tell me about prosperity. Tell me about happiness and joy. There's happiness. And as a matter of fact, when they were about to chop Paul's head off, you would have thought that he was looking out over Hawaii and fixing to go lay on the beach for a little while. Because you know, he, he was talking about it just sounded joyous because he knew where he was. Our time is now. We was called to the kingdom for such a time as this. So don't lose heart. As a matter of fact, Pastor, did you notice that what's absent in the book of Acts? They didn't have to have a cheering section. You know, to, I love, I, I, I'm, I'm glad in sports and I enjoy all the forward ever, backward never, you know, and, and all the chairs thing that they do, and I, I think it's great. But the church shouldn't have to have cheerleaders. Let's try that again. The church shouldn't have to have cheerleaders. The Lord is on your side. He has called, you know, He chose you. Of all the people, you, you know, first off, you know, the fact that you're one of so many of the sperm, the Lord picked you out out of millions, and He picked you to get the light to live. But then on top of that, they didn't just do that. He did, you just wasn't on the planet. He come by and he saw that pretty smile on your face. And, and he thought, I'm going to put my blood right down on her life. And I'm going to change her. I'm going to transform her. And I'm calling her into the kingdom for such a time of this. And whoever she lays hands on will be healed. Sickness and disease will have to flee because she is a born-again believer. It, 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 you know, it was amazing who he uses. As a matter of fact, that's all you got to do is be available. So let's don't make it sound like it's a big, hard thing to do for a healing to take place. And would you begin to speak over your people, nothing but life, cast down every evil report that comes along, and whatever you do, don't talk about their disease. Does that really sound radical, Pastor? Well, it, it don't sound as radical to me as talking to a tree. Or a, or a bush on fire. That don't sound that radical. But it, it won't matter how, how radical it sounds. When you begin to speak, what I'm just doing what the Word says. And when I say, and, and, I, and I, I will say, every time somebody comes up, I will declare that by His stripes, they're healed. I don't care if you've got a report that stretches all the way to that back door right there. I don't believe none of that report. 